I'm Sharice LeClaire. The September 9th primary is right around the corner, and we want you to be informed. CBS3 Springfield, The Republican, MassLive.com, and New England Public Radio have joined together to bring you a detailed look at the candidates running for public office. Now here's the Republican's Rob Rizzuto to introduce us to candidates running for office here in western Massachusetts. Hello and thank you for joining us for this edition of the 2014 Campaign Roundtable Series. I'm politics reporter Rob Rizzuto and before we meet the candidates today I'd like to introduce you to our panel of expert journalists. From New England Public Radio we have Henry Epp and we have the Republicans editorial writer Ron Chamellis. Gentlemen thank you very much for joining us. And to my left we have the five Democratic candidates running to represent the first Hamden Hampshire district in the Massachusetts State Senate. Uh, first to my left is Eric Lesser. He is a former aide for President Barack Obama and he's a Longmeadow resident. Um, and then to his left is James Chip Harrington. He's a corrections officer and a school committee member from Ludlow. And further to his left we have Springfield City Councilor Tim Allen who is also a professor at both uh, Springfield College and Elms College teaching business classes. Um, then to his left we have Aaron Saunders who is a former Ludlow Selectman and the former Chief of Staff for State Senator Gail Kenderis who is actually holding the seat but not running for re-election. Um, and then to his left we have Tom Lachusa. He's an active member of the Longmeadow Democratic Town Committee and he is a counselor at the Hamden County House of Corrections. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming by. Thanks. I just want to correct you on one thing. I'm not a corrections officer any longer. I'm a small business owner. Oh, is that right? Oh, well, thank For, you very Former much. corrections officer. All right, I still am a fuck man in love, though. Oh, is it? Wow. <laughs> yeah. We'll get that all straight right off the gate. Apologize, gentlemen. No problem. All right. Uh, well, the first issue we are going to tackle here is uh, one that's very important in Western Massachusetts, particularly. We're going to talk about casino gambling. Um, in 2011, the state legislature passed a law that basically allowed for the licensing of up to three resort-style casinos and one slots parlor in the Commonwealth. Um, the legislation was written in such a way that the uh, representatives and senators thought that it would spur economic development around the sites of the actual casinos. Um, here in Springfield, the voters last July approved an MGM Springfield casino that would be placed in the heart of the South End. Um, right now there's an active repeal effort and a ballot question that will be uh, coming up in November um, but whether or not the law will stand. Uh, what we'd like to know is where you stand on the topic of casinos. Basically are you going to vote to uphold or repeal the casino law? Um, and for this issue, um, Eric, we can start with you. Great. Well, thanks for having me, Rob. I really appreciate it. I'm going to vote against the repeal. So to make that clear, because they made the wording confusing, that means I support keeping the casino in Springfield. And I'll tell you why. I don't think it's fair for Eastern Massachusetts to have veto power over decisions that have already been made in Western Massachusetts. The people of Springfield passed a referendum in support of casinos. It's now our obligation to make sure that that casino gets done correctly, uh, that there's oversight, and that MGM lives up to its promises. I don't think it's fair that we then go to a statewide referendum after the whole process has worked its way through, where 85 percent of the voters live in the Boston area who then get veto power over a decision that's already been made in Springfield. So I'm against the repeal effort. But I'll say this as well. You know, I believe that our economic strategy here in Western Massachusetts has to go far beyond casino gambling. And that's why my campaign has been focused on the big things we need to do to create middle class opportunity here in Western Massachusetts. That in involves a high speed rail link between Boston and Springfield. Let's get all those people from Boston out here to visit the casino using our rail link uh, and improving high tech manufacturing and our education infrastructure. Those are the things I want to focus so on. Supporting the casino. Okay. And uh, Chip? Yeah. Uh, many similar answers there as well. I'm going to support the um, casino. I want them to stay here in Springfield. So I'll mm -hmm. be voting against the repeal as well, too. Uh, but I've got a little bit of a different, different take on it. I don't count myself as really an enthusiastic supporter of casinos. I do feel that the legislation was a bit flawed right from the start. I think three casinos throughout the entire state is oversaturation. Mm -hmm. And also considering the fact that you have Connecticut, New York, and New Hampshire, Connecticut already existing and other, other states already you know, pursuing it legislatively, I think it's going to be a bit much. Um, but having that said, Springfield has played by the rules and so has an MGM. They've done everything that they uh, had needed to do to get to where they are right now. It supports local vendors. MGM is pr promising to support local vendors in this area. And they're promising about the jobs, about uh, creating jobs in this area. 
And as, as Mr. Lesser said, it's not the, um, the answer to what we need right now, but it is a bit of a shot in the arm. So I like to see the casino as a small component of a larger economic development package that the city of Springfield needs. Um, so I will be voting to keep the casino process alive here in Western Massachusetts. Um, but uh, having, you know, giving much thought to this, as a state legislature, my job is going to be holding MGM accountable seven and ten years down the road. Make sure the promises are up. Exactly. They have a plan. They have a seven and ten year plan right now. And it's going to be up to the local legislators in this area to hold them accountable for the promises that they're making us now. Um, sure. I'm not going to let them off the hook at, at that point. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tim, top of the casinos. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Rob. Uh, as a member of the Springfield City Council, I was part of the process. Uh, the mayor made the recommendation for MGM, and then it came to the council. And we voted unanimously in favor of the casino. My vote was one of them. And as the lawyer for the city told me, I was the hardest vote to get. When they had my vote, they knew they had everybody. Uh, the reason I voted for it is, uh, is that the jobs and economic benefits are just too, too, uh, too big to, to ignore. Uh, 2,000 construction jobs, 3,000 permanent jobs. 17 million in tax revenue annually to the city, 8 million in other benefits to the city, 50 million, a million dollars a week to vendors, etc. Hope, hopefully most of which will be local, as Chip just said. So I'm in favor of the casino, but I'm also in favor of, of generally economic development in the region. And my economic development plan, which is on my website, talks about early education which is cr critical to our, to our economic development for the future. All the studies say that. Also talks about precision manufacturing, which is here in today's headline. 1,700 precision manufacturing jobs will be available. So we need to be really paying attention to other economic development besides the casino. But I am in favor of keeping the casino there. I, and, you know, to, to clarify, as, as Eric said, uh, the, the wording is unusual. I will vote against the repeal. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Aaron, top of casino gaming, where do you come down on this? I'm in support of the casino, and uh, Senator Kandaris' chief of staff had the opportunity to work on the legislation. And uh, a, a lot of the focus gets put on the, the three casinos and, uh, and the siting and the process. What gets lost in this is the other components, millions of dollars in local aid, funding for transportation infrastructure. For the first time, a serious investment in gaming addiction treatment. And these are some of the benefits of the law, of the good work that the legislature did uh, that hasn't been in the headlines. For Springfield, this means thousands of jobs, millions of dollars in investment in our local economy. And that's a good thing. It doesn't fix everything by a long shot, but it's a component of a larger picture for Springfield's rebound from the Great Recession. And it, we see this with announcements seemingly weekly now, whether it's from the mayor's office, whether it's from the chamber, of the good things that are happening here in the region. This is gonna be a component of it, and I hope it moves forward. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, Tom, topic of casinos. Well, yes, I, it was a hard decision for me personally, because I see a lot of people with addictions. I work in a jail and uh, I can see the damages it, it causes. But I think it's a very ex exciting time for Springfield. I'm really excited about it. I think it's a good thing. I've had so many people over the years say, uh, oh, Springfield, I've driven through there on the way to Vermont or on the way to Cape. Uh, so it'll be exciting for them to stop. My own sister said, oh, well, the casino, I'll be coming to stay there. So I think it's good, and, and it opens up other opportunities. Uh, the, uh, you know, when you go on vacation, you usually want artwork, people buy art, and we have a lot of local artists, and I'd like to see some of the empty buildings in Springfield turned into uh, galleries, uh, you know, and, and workspace for artists. Um, the other thing is that, you know, I've been here, and uh, from the first few days I was here, I heard about Springfield's train station, how beautiful it was. Uh, I've still never been in it, uh, but I'm really excited about the possibility that a casino could really bring trains into the area and open them up. Now, trains are a federal issue. This is not a state issue, but I, um, you know, I'm fully excited about it. And again, uh, as Aaron was saying, you know, we, we need to get services in place for people who do get in trouble. A person who wins their yearly salary in a week uh, is at high risk of addiction. And so we really need to have services ready for them. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's gonna bring a lot of happy people into town. Uh, I would look forward to the music and entertainment that's going to be showing up, and uh, you know I think it's going to be good for the city. Gotcha. So for a variety of reasons, um, all five of our candidates are they'll be voting to uphold the casino law as it stands now. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you guys had mentioned, the wording is a little bit confusing. Um, if you vote yes, then you're voting to 
repeal the casino law. Yes actually means no, and no means yes. It is uh, kind of confusing. You really have to pay attention to the uh, nuances of wording when you hit the voting booth that day. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in a few moments.